Austin just got his side welded up. Boogies. What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today we got the undercoating all done. We're going to go ahead and put the subframe on. Get the subframe, subframe connectors welded in and the rear end back on the car so we can put it on the ground. So this is what we're working with. Like I said, the undercoating is done. That was in the previous video. My brother's still home, so he's gonna help me out. Put the subframe up, get our PTFB subframe connectors on the car. Gotta weld them in the rear spots. Actually, right where these jack stands are sitting, so I have to strip some of the coating off, get those welded in, and then go ahead and get our strange nine inch back into the car. And then we get this thing back on the ground. So, coating came out great. Um, Man, this is, so this will be the second time we put it in the subframe and the rear end back into the car. Not a big deal, but um, yeah, let's get to it. For those of you who do not know, this is our 78 Camaro. This is our uh, drag car project. Not really a drag car, it's gonna be a street car, but it's gonna be, you know, hopefully an eight second or a faster car. So we got our subframe off, it's fully restored, upper and lower tubular control arms. We got Wilwood brakes. Our strange nine inch, it's a 370 gear, it's a spool. It's got their uh, their race brakes on there. Our Calvert racing mono leaves, our Caltrack system. So, got a lightweight calm, two Kirky seats in there. And um, like I said, we just finished the undercoating. So once we get this together, we'll be ready to send the car off to the uh, fab shop to get the cage installed. We're gonna be doing a 850 cert cage to start off with and um, go from there. Well, running into our first issue. This bolt right here was really hard to get out of the subframe and I don't know why. It went in, all four of them went in super smooth, like all the way up with by hand. And then taking this one out, you know, the bolt is fine. Like there's nothing wrong with this bolt and there's nothing wrong with the nut insert on the body. So, you know, we tried picking at it to see if there's any like shavings or anything. So no one's got a 5 8 by 11 uh, tap around here, Harbor Freight, Home Depot. So what we're gonna do is make our own. And you guys saw this on our uh, head install video of the engine. We actually just took the stock bolt and put a bunch of grooves in it. So that's what we're gonna do. We got two of them just in case. So we're gonna put probably two or three grooves in one of these bolts and then go ahead and file them, make them sharp. And then we're gonna go and put grease on it and then thread it up into the hole hoping that it will chase our threads out and maybe even recut. That's the hopes, that's the plan. So, because if not, we're gonna have to replace that and that's not gonna be fun. got some metal on it so it was cutting the hole still looks fine well it worked cut little slots in our bolt we got from Home Depot and we actually I don't know if you, it's probably hard to see but we actually kind of filed down the threads just a hair just so they're less um, I don't know less sharp I guess so it goes in there just fine and we went ahead and tapped it two times cleaned it out and it seems to be good it's still a little tight but I, think, I don't think we're ever gonna get it to where it's not tight. So, I mean, that's fine. We're gonna go ahead and put the subframe up. All right, so right now we got it up in the air and it's kind of hard to see, but you see this bolt right here? That's the bolt we used to chase the threads. And now we're actually trying to line up the frame. These are the alignment holes we were talking about. So, as you can see that one right here, we're up and through the frame. That one's lined up and then that one's lined up as well. So what we're trying to do is just trying to make them as square as possible this is just a regular hole that one has a slotted hole so we're trying to figure out what's the best kind of position we need to be in what size is that uh like it's not so bad with this yeah I 
it just got a little easier. All right, subframe is up and on, and our little alignment bolts, as you can barely see it in there, nice and loose. And everything is it's as centered as we could get it, so we got the hole lined up. That one just goes straight up. This one's slotted, so we line that up. So now, what we're dealing with is getting these subframe connectors mocked up. That way we can weld in the aft portion of it. So we're gonna go ahead, mark that, see where it wants to sit, and then uh, go ahead, prep that area for welding, prep the subframe connectors, get all the powder coat off that stuff, and go ahead and weld these guys up. Alright, we got the subframe connectors up, we got the forward end bolted in nice and snug, we got everything situated to start doing the back, we got the jack here to keep it up, just so it doesn't fall on Douglas as he's welding, there he is. We got the welder set, we're going to use the uh, smart MIG feature on the Rebel 235 ESOB, so we got our 10 gauge metal set, that we determine that with the gauge measurement tool, and then we get 200 wire feed speed so Douglas is going to go ahead and let it rip and then we're going to see how she comes out well that's going to work Carlson's doing some welding whenever he's ready let's go brother let's do this Crispy. Do it a little longer. There you go. Alright, nice both sides are welded up. It's probably hard to see. Oh, let me turn my light on. Damn. Look at that. Weld it up. Paint it up. Use our steel it coating, of course. Because why what else would we use? And uh, Austin just got his side welded up. Boogies. <laughs> they're not that bad. They're not that bad. They're not the best, but they're not that bad. Fine aren't that bad either. Got the subframe connectors on. They are fully bolted up. They are tight. The subframe is done and complete. So just put our little clip nuts back in for our rear end shackle. This is the forward mount for the rear end, the leaf springs. So we'll go ahead. Get these bushings cleaned up and then go ahead get the rear end over here get it in line probably do the aft portion of it probably install the aft portion then the forward portion um yeah so we're gonna go ahead grind them down put some sealant on it and then go ahead and put the rear end in the sink On the jack stands. This one's loose too, so we can go ahead and pull both of these. All right, stop, Austin, stop. All right, maybe a tad higher. Okay. That's two jacks. All right, that's it. Bring her down. There we go. She on the ground. Look, and it's never gotta come back apart again. Woohoo! So that's it, you guys. The car is back on the ground. We got the rear end in, subframe 
subframe connectors. We also got our steering done. And as you can see, it is now a slip joint uh, steering shaft, whatever you want to call it. Nice little cool 3 8 bolt, 3 8, 8 in there. So we're all good. You know, we got everything done we wanted to do. All the undercoating is done. You can't see that. I don't know what I'm showing you. <laughs> but yeah, this car is definitely a learning experience for both of us. We've never had a project together. So this is, you know, this is something new for us. And uh, I'd say it's going quite well. So that's going to be it for today's video, guys. Austin's heading back to Texas, what, tomorrow? Monday? So it's just going to be me again. I'm going to be running solo for a while. Not too long, about six months, and he'll be out of the Army. And then we can really get some progress done on this thing. So thanks for watching the video, guys, and we'll see you in the next episode.